up, Amara? What's up, Dave? Hello? What's up, Brad? Hey. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining Five Points Art Gallery's fourth video virtual artist chat session. Um, the purpose of these are not only just to have some connection and interconnectivity, but to put um, directly together the artists with um, supporters and collectors from the space and have them talk about what they're doing um, in spite of all of this um, and anything else they want to discuss and also talk about if um, I've been asked about how to support not only the space but the artist and this is a direct way that um, people can interface and communicate directly and loop me out if you want or include me if you like um, with the artist and so each of them have a uh, different aesthetics and practices. A lot of them are painters, but have very, very vast styles and aesthetics. And so they can um, show us what they've been working on, talk about what they've been doing, vent, grieve, whatever you mean, <laughs> uh, or express elation. Some people are like getting a lot of rest right now, which is good too. Um, I call this session um, the Sage Men of Five Points because um, they are all wise, experienced artists to me um, that I value their, their input and, and um, their mentorship that they've offered me and um, support as well. So we can get started with um, David. Please. You don't want to get started? No, let's, let's get somebody else to start real quick. I'm playing. Should I start in alphabetical order, Amar? Okay, I'll start. You can just uh, let us know what's going on with you, how you've been during this time, what you've been up to, anything you want to let us know about your practice. A lot of you also have um, children that I know you have to go retrieve from schools. So maybe you, wanna, you can talk about that too and how that's um, impacting you, if it is. But again, you can focus on your art and then venture off direction. And then okay. also, lastly, um, people who are just like in the audience, you are free and encouraged to interject and make this as conversational um, a process as possible. So it's very like an open end circle kind of discussion. So interject, ask questions, probe, put two cents in whenever you want. All right, Amar, sorry. Okay. So I've been working on um, sketches that uh, I'm doing for my work for the the No Fellowship um, show. Um, the shows it's been the date has been moved to September. You know, it it would have originally been in June, the beginning of June, like June fourth. So it's moved to September. So. Um, I'm working on that, the work for that. It's still gonna be at the Haggerty, but it, it'll be up um, from sometime, I think around September 10th through um, sometime in December. So mm -hmm. it'll be up like the whole um, school semester, if, if there will be a school, a school semester this year uh, in the fall. Do you wanna explain what the No Fellowship is? Oh, okay. So um, every year, um, artists are w Wisconsin artists are encouraged to apply for this this fellowship grant, um, and it's called the No Fellowship, and um, they will award um, grants to two established artists and three emerging artists. So I, I received a, a grant from. Uh, or for the emerging artist, I'm, no, I'm sorry, the established artist category, and um, and so I'm creating work for the show that will um, go up in September at the Haggerty Museum of Art um, at Marquette University here in Milwaukee. 
Um, I, I'm also working on uh, a portrait, a pastel portrait right now. Um, what am I? Oh, I'm also doing sketches for um, the virtual fashion show um, that will be at Five Points Gallery. I, I, is it still in July? I think I'm pushing it back until August. Okay, for August. Um, and it might, depending on like these um, stay at home bands and the lifts, um, oh, okay. it might be in person still, which is my preference, but we'll see. All right, so um, I'm doing seven, I'm working on sketches for seven outfits. Um, I'm doing the, the seven African powers or the, the seven like most popular Orisha. The outfits are based on, on those seven Orisha. Um, Obatala, Eshu, Shango, Yemanja, Oshun, Oya, and Ogun. Behind me is one of Amar's um, Arisha pieces. Um, this is Obatala, which is the Arisha or deity of um, wisdom. And his color is white. But maybe you can explain the other um, Arishas. And then I have also some mini ones from the gallery up here. You want me to explain the other Arisha? You if you can quickly. Oh, okay, okay, real quickly. Like their, okay. Like their color and what they represent, and that's it. Okay, I'll, I'll do it real quickly then. So, Eshu, so, some people say Elegba, you say Elegba or Eshu. We'll He's it. like the guardian, the guardian of Risha. You go to him before you, um, Is this before him? you go to any other Arisha. And uh, his colors are red and black. Um, he's like a trickster and, um, He's the guardian of the crossroads. It's many like folk tales that um, he's involved with in African American uh, spiritual culture. Uh, there's Obatala. Obatala is like an old wise father. He's um, sometimes called like the the he like he fashioned mankind. He's not the almighty God, but he he was. Um, given the job, a task of, of fashioning mankind. And um, his colors are all white. Um, he usually has like a, a horse tail fan or a, a staff. Um, he's usually an old, a old man with a beard, white beard. Um, there's Yemen, Yemenja or Yemonja. She's a mother, deity. Um, her colors are blue and white. She's also the ocean deity, and she's over like nurturing and intuition, um, childhood or, or um, motherhood, so to speak. And um, she's also, she was a river deity, but they say when Africans were enslaved and brought to the Americas, she was called on, on the ride over. I, I call it ride loosely. Um, and then once she was called on, she became an ocean deity as, as the enslaved Africans crossed the Atlantic. There's Oshun, she's the, the goddess of, of love, creativity, um, female sexuality, um, beauty. Um, her colors are, are usually gold. Um, oh, sweet things also. She's a, she's a, uh, a river deity. Um, she's very like arrogant and um, beautiful and sexual, and some of her symbols are the the mirror, the the fan. Um, she's she likes sweet sweet things like honey. Uh, she's over um, birth, like giving birth to the child. But once she has the child, she doesn't keep the child because she's too busy for that. And she gives the, the child to Yemen Ya. So um, there's Ogun. Ogun is like, um, he's over technology, but he's also a warrior and, and a blacksmith and a hunter. So, and he, and uh, oh, he's also the god of iron. So he's over anything that has to do with iron. So that, that includes technology. 
So anything like like railroads to trains to to um, weapons, uh, anything metal, and um, he's a, a loner, and his colors are are um, green and black. The Shango Shango's um, um, his his colors are red and white. He's over fire and lightning. I think I showed them. Um, he's masculine and I was shocked. Over dance, male virility, sexuality. Um, he's um, hot, you know, real hot energy. Um, he's also over um, music. Oh, and like also beauty. He has something to do with beauty too. And then um, there's Oya. Oya, um, she's the guardian of the crossroad. Oh no, sorry, guardian of the of the cemetery. So um, she's over death, and she's also um, have to. She has to do with disasters and hurricanes because they they produce sudden or dramatic change in your life. So um, anything that that's going to produce a sudden dramatic change, like a hurricane, for instance, she's over that. And um, her colors are like maroon or purple. Um, um, she's over like whirlwinds. Oh, she's also a warrior. So like some of her symbols are is, is also a horse tail um, whisk, and but also a, a machete. And um, I think that's it. I, one of your other ones sold. I showed the wrong one. I think it was Shango that I showed. Oh, uh, and now uh, I, I just recently I sold a uh, painting um, today. Somebody contacted me, contacted me over Messenger, and then they paid me through PayPal. So I just have to get them the painting. And um, what else? What kind of painting? Um, it's a it's a painting a, a series I did like some years ago, of um, sort of guardian angels, and um, like this. It's it's a it's a new woman that's an angel, and she's um, she's reclined over um, over like chocolate, like big chunks of chocolate, I guess. And um, she's like mourning the, like the loss of um, of the children and other workers who have to produce the the you know the, the cocoa the the cocoa um, supply for the chocolate and stuff in in Africa and other places. So she's she's holding like a machete in her hand, which which has blood dripping from it and stuff. You know, because they cut down the the, co the cocoa pods with the machete and stuff. So that's the painting I, I saw. And then, um, what else am I working on? Um, so you're busy. Oh, um, well, I, I, have, I have opportunities to do other things. People are contacting me to, for illustrations and stuff like that. I'm not, I, I'm not, um, Working as hard as I I could be, but um, besides doing art, I, I've I've been working out a lot, and I've been eating a lot, you know, because that <laughs> that was something I couldn't do a lot before. I couldn't eat as much before, because I'm always on the go and stuff, and I'm riding my bike everywhere. So right now I'm eating a lot, and and I but I try to work out a lot, and when I can, I, I try to ride do a like a short three or four mile ride every night on my bike. And then um, I, um, I visit my children like once in a while. I have two adult children and so I guess that's it unless. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. David, you ready? Sure. All right. Um, so how have you been holding up? Uh, I'm just trying, for the most part, not to um, go crazy. Uh, this is a little bit harder for me. Um, 
I'm pretty, I'm a pretty social guy, so I, uh, being shut in in my place uh, is not the easiest. For me, I enjoy people. I enjoy events. I go to a lot of events. I, you know, do a lot of things. Uh, and uh, it's really difficult to start with me. Uh, you know, I got one in Chicago who is uh, going to start school at, at the Art Institute, but now that's probably being pushed back. I uh, thankfully just uh, got her before this all happened, uh, a couple months before this all happened, if she was still in Baltimore, where she was going to school originally, while this happened, this would have been a mess for her because all those kids got kicked out of the school and they had to figure out a way to get home and it was just a mess for a lot of college kids to deal with. Um, so luckily, uh, she transferred to Chicago before that all happened. So. Um, she's with my mom in Chicago. My other daughter is uh, with my ex-wife uh, and uh, she's quarantined over there and I haven't seen her since either. So uh, being apart from friends and family, it's not so hard. Uh, so I pretty much just, you know, have a routine where I uh, get up, uh, I, I I, um, you know, a little bit after I do a little work in, in the home, um, and then a little bit after lunch, I uh, come to the studio and uh, I start to work. Um, I've been pretty productive uh, this uh, so far this year. This year uh, started with the 30 by 30 by 30 uh, Exhibit. project ex exhibition at Bar Gallery. Uh, it's an exhibition that I did three years ago uh, for the first time, and I was uh, going to do it again um, this year. Originally, I was going to do it. I was hoping my daughter, my older daughter, applied for it, and I was hoping that she uh, was going to get in it. And I kind of wanted to, you know, show with my daughter, mm -hmm. uh, but she didn't get in, and I did. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll still, I'll still use it to make some stuff. Um, These pieces were like the is, first ones from the 30 by 30? In the yep, those were the ones, you know, that was three years ago. Yeah. Wow, yeah, like, like that is a really, really, really awesome piece, man. You want to explain Thank what you. these in your work is about? Yeah. Um, well, uh, years ago, the uh, uh, the my work has always been pretty narrative uh, and things that I can identify with, whether it was you know uh, the home life, family life, uh, divorces, life, death, all that kind of stuff, um, relationships, children, um, and just like the building of homes. Um, and so it was about. You know, after after uh, 2011, um, a w civil war started in in Syria, a country that my mom is uh, from, and uh, my parents are immigrants. Um, my dad was Iraqi, and my mom's from Syria. I've lived in Syria for a period of time in my younger life. I visited there often when I was a kid. Um, so. It was sort of frustrating when, as that war was going on, and it, uh, um, it wasn't being paid attention to. Uh, I felt that the, uh, the the states here were responsible for the civil war. Um, I felt like uh, um, it was sort of like the perfect storm of things, where you had an uprising, but you also had a doubling down in, in Iraq, and uh, which forced their insurgents to move out of Iraq and into Syria, uh, which started a civil war and uh, just made it, uh, I think it's listed as either the worst civil war in history or the second worst. Um, uh, uh, so it's become quite the genocide over there. It's still going on. 
And for years, I was frustrated that it wasn't being reported. And I uh, kind of turned to my work to start uh, getting people to pay attention to, to it. Because it's, you know, I mean, as an artist, it's the only way I know how to communicate. Um, so uh, those 30s, I, I think I did a series before those 30s happened, uh, which led to those uh, 30, 30 pieces. Um, but Man, the, that's solid, a really good context though for you know the juxtaposition between your work and culture and everything and i right. like i think that's the biggest thing that i have the the like the question for for everybody that's that's on today i know that i i definitely missed all of the colloquialisms and everything like that but i, I guess as as somebody that is a fan of art and a fan of artists and you guys expression i'm wondering how everything that's going on is just like translating on on through your your different mediums and everything especially as it relates to having you know certain like um, um um societal or cultural like traumas that that you know that you've like lived through and everything like that and and do you see i guess to to narrow in the question do you see the uh do you see any of the anxiousness or the, do you feel that your anxiousness that kind of comes with the, the whole uh, society humdrum, how everybody is inside? Do you feel the need to express more? Do you feel that your expression has kind of been dwarfed? Do you feel that you're like understimulated? You know, do you feel that you're being overstimulated in wrong ways and that, that you know, it kind of put, forces your hand to kind of do types of art? Well, for me, my my anxiety is probably not at, at the uh, at the comfortable level. Um, it, it's a uh, uh, it's a bit difficult because um, actually I've I've used the whole series to sort of connect back with the culture that uh, I didn't realize that I've become so Americanized. You know mm. the the. the uh, uh, you know, America is a, is a strange country, you know, they really kind of, you don't realize growing up just how much they force you to fit in. And, uh, right. you know, as a, as a kid, you don't want to stand out uh, negatively, of course, and especially mm -hmm. at a time when uh, the country's at war with uh, your father's country. Right. Um, so we, we often hid the fact that we were Arabs. Um, uh, uh, you know, there, there American stereotypes of Arabs have been going on for you know decades, obviously. Right. Um, you know, I remember when this when this whole quarantine actually started happening. I made the statement that um, I remember after nine eleven when that happened, my sister and I uh, were so paranoid and high on anxiety that we literally thought, as, as many other Arabs did, we literally thought that they were going to come and round us up and put us in camps. Wow. That's the way it felt. Um, I, that's very real. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I like, I mean, I'm, I'm a black man. I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm also um, Cuban and everything. My father's Cuban and everything. So I definitely understand a, a bit of like that, uh, that kind of like duality, but also the whole um, kind of like the, uh, the, the dual norms, I guess you can say with, with um, American citizenry and everything like that. Not that it was like, oh my God, so drastic, you know, for us, it was just more that, uh, that we didn't have ways to identify with our Latin culture. So that was something that we had to do ourselves but then going back to what you were saying about the the whole of uh, the backdrop of things going on and everything like that like i mean i'll say myself like man you know i don't feel that a lot of um of uh black stories and everything like that is told even though i know that that's something that's you know on the regular you have to sell, source those things yourself but that can, as a as an expresser, as somebody that that you know, expresses through a certain medium, that can be feeling like you know that you're. Hello. 
that you can feel kind of choked off with with so much going uh, around like going on around you and, and like kind of nobody is like you know identifying you with the group or asking you how you feel and everything like that and you're being affected and uh man i like man I, i'm so uh this is amazing for for me and people that are like um creatives but in a different way like i don't express myself in those in, in the same way as you guys do but like the 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 um the desire to make sure that that my voice is being heard or that people understand you know my position or people like me is, is like super super important and um man like this this conversation is just like really really amazing even the gentleman that spoke before you like this is really great shout out to Fatima. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions leading off of all the things he said. One is two are for you, David, but he asked a question earlier, like the trauma is has the trauma impacted or maybe it's not trauma for you, like this situation impacted your work. But that's for other artists, but I'll finish up with David really quick. I had a question about how you make yourself appear. Can you repeat that? I I have a question about how you make yourself appear less Arab. How do you go about that when you were talking about your childhood and trying to assimilate? And well, I mean, well, that, yeah. Well, I mean, we are light skinned Arabs, obviously. I'm, I'm able to, you know, hide among white people, you know. Uh, I look like one of them to a certain degree. Uh, and um, you know, I mean, you know, my first language is Arabic and, uh, to a certain point, it's sort of embarrassing. I, I, I my Arabic now is terrible. I, I can speak it, but very little and, ter and, 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 uh, I'm, it gets embarrassing when I'm, uh, trying to talk to other Arabs, um, using the language. Uh, but you know, we grew up in a very, you know, uh, uh, in a neighborhood that was, you know, where our neighbors were just, you know, I went to school with just white people or, or Jewish people. Uh, and, and like, like I said, in the 80s at a time that was very, you know, that, that Reagan 80s kind of time where you, know, you, you have to look like one of us kind of uh, time. Um, so I wasn't aware of it. Like that was a situation, of course, because I'm just a kid. But it's obviously I'm 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 adapting to it without knowing that I am. You know, um, so I mean I, I remember at, at points where uh, we'd be going to other you know we'd be going to other uh, uh, things that you know there was an Arab church that we used to go to. And I kind of distanced myself uh, from them because I felt they were too Arab, and I was trying to fit in with everybody else. Does that make sense? Yes. Does your work um, offset that now? Is that the purpose? I, I think I think my work is to sort of reattach myself. To it. I mean, I've always known known that I was an Arab, and I've always valued my mom's country and all all that stuff but it's sort of things that you do subconsciously not knowing that you're doing it. if that makes sense you know uh you know american assimilation is really strong and you don't even realize it until you're you know until you're an adult a full adult my uh, last looking back is um on Facebook it seems like you post um what I know is your personality like witty sarcastic comments and jokes and well, so yeah I'm a funny motherfucker yeah <laughs> I enjoy being funny I mean yeah no I I use my humor to sort of uh, uh make fun of situations to you know I, I've made a lot of jokes about what we're going through right now uh the matter of the fact is, I'm, I'm, 
I'm my, my anxiety is at such a point where it's hard for me to sleep going through this. Um, but the only way I know how to deal with things is to make fun of it and to make work, you know. Um, to show you some of the stuff I've, I've done, uh, if you can see on the screen here, uh, that's a piece on the wall over there that's done on uh, in plastic and on wood panel. In plastic is hot wax. Yeah, beeswax in the medium of uh, oil paint. Um, so uh, I use Arab uh, uh, designs uh, called uh, Zalij uh, as a reference to the culture uh, and, and the sort of my way of attaching myself to it, uh, the culture that I knew. Which designs that you can see on. Um, you would see on buildings, on uh, you know furniture, uh, 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 clothing, and, and you know, instruments, and all sorts of stuff in the Middle East, uh, jewelry boxes and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, re recently, I applied that onto uh, onto uh, figures in the clothing over here, and. This is the piece I did in, uh, uh, in February. So wow. Wow. <laughs> David, is that like a bloody bandana over a child's face, eyes? Um, that is the... Yeah, your audio is... Um... Sorry, your audio is a little wonky. My audio? It got one. Yeah, can you explain it? We can hear you, can you now. Hear me now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, that figure is of a uh, uh, um, father trying to uh, a refugee father trying to rescue. Daughter, uh, um, who also does not have a head. Um, but the, the floral that it's used is, uh, is all Arab, Arab design references floral. And uh, of course, still using those the Zalij designs, uh, mosaic designs that you'll see in the Middle East. Um, currently, uh, making working on this piece that is a reference to my phone. Um, but I sort of added, I don't know if you can see that, but I added uh, um, the face mask sort of as a, just as a reference to kind of it being like, right you know, uh, uh, sort of identifying the audio is going. Oh, um, I'm sorry. It's okay. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. You see that piece behind me? No. It's like. Can you hear me? No, I can definitely hear them. It's just more that, you know, of course, there's going to be a little bit of lag because there's so many people that's on the feed. So I'm just making okay. sure that I got my mic uh, muted and everything like that because I'm really soaking this up. This is really great. I'm going okay. to other artists based on what Kelly has um, proposed. Has this influenced your work, if at all? Do you feel like I have to get this stuff into my work or is it you doing work as usual or are you taking a break um how oh, I, who, anybody can jump in it can be the next person i've been very productive i've, I've made a lot of work in this just uh, uh you know i sold a lot of pieces the last uh a uh, couple of months one piece going to uh the um 
Wisconsin Art Museum yeah. about a large piece um, and and some other people. So I kind of have to make some large pieces so I have things to show again. So I've been using this time to make larger pieces. Uh, you know, I'm in the I'm in the studio every day because there's nothing else to do. There's no hanging out with my friends. There's no going to see my family. Uh, uh, you know, watching TV and all that stuff is just not enough for me. So I come to my studio and I work every day. I'm as productive as as uh, as you could be. Um, uh, and you know, I hope that this doesn't last too much longer. Uh, but because you want to be productive. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I want to. I miss the world. I want to see people. Um, I want things to open. But until then, this is the only way I can cope. You know, uh, you always have your studio there to love you when nobody else is. So I'm with my studio. Has anybody else been uber productive like David? Anybody else? Any other other artists? Brad, Matope, George, Benny. You want to them? Uh, one of the things I meant I, I I heard in the news and it's been very really productive for me is that they said that I think in general people should just get into a schedule and so what I did was I created a schedule Monday through Friday um, my work a large painting so I can't get into the studio it's off limits so what I've been doing oddly enough maybe not so oddly enough I've been reading a lot I've, I've read seven books I've read books from uh, Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism and You, Art in My Mind, James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, um, and, and just so on and so forth. And so what has happened, and I was actually talking to my daughter about this because I am a visual artist. I said to you, know, you know, I'm, I'm writing two books too. So I'm doing all this reading because I have to do something with my time because I just can't get into the studio. So I, I decided I'm going to write two books. One is a fictional book. And I was mentioning my daughter, it's very much like painting to me. Like grammar and syntax to me is very cognitive. And when you paint, at least when I paint, I'm thinking about color theory, I'm thinking about composition. To me, that's more cognitive. And then the book, since it's fictional, it's very intuitive because I, it, I, I didn't do an outline. So I'm just allowing this story to be told. And when I do my painting, my paintings are supposed to be ambiguous. So again, it's a visual, um, story that's being told and I'm just be, I'm just a vehicle so it's really odd how the, that did my writing mirrors my artwork and and I and and so th uh, that's been very interesting and then that way I think it, it helps me get this schedule so one day doesn't sort of meld into the next you know because all of a sudden what you do is you just start losing track of time and decide what so I, I I've been thinking about the question that Kelly uh, uh, pose and I'm waiting to see what's going to happen to the work because I don't think I cannot but be uh, uh, impacted by what's going on but I don't think I, I my work is not imposing my will upon the work it's allowing the work to become what it's going to be and so I I, I don't have uh, some images in mind but I do know that if I create this visual dialogue with the work that what is going what is going on in the world what's being said the misinformation the lies is going to come out in the work when you don't paint and or create a book with an outline when you title your work do you have a title first and you build you know abstractly around it and then put it together or do you title it after it's it, 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 constructed yeah, the title of, um, of, the, of this book, is the, it was created the same way in the same, same timetable as my paintings. I don't go into a painting thinking, labeling it. You know, I allow this painting to become what it's going to be. And then as I'm creating it, titles will come to mind. And it's the same thing when I was writing this book. I've been spending a lot of time writing this book. And, and all of a sudden, this title came to mind. And I decided this is what it's going to be. Now, it may not remain the same title. But it's been so important in the development of this book that I think I'm going to retain this title. So it's been really interesting. Like I said, uh, um, it's, I still, it's, it's oddly enough because I can't do painting. So I dream about painting. I dream about constructing paintings. But I do, 
I, I do my creative work through, through the writing. Do you um, journal or like write down the idea so you can get back to it when you can, or you just let the dream and then when you get back to it, no. you want to try to recall? No, it is as it is before. I don't know how many people uh, it's happened to you, uh, but my best ideas come when I'm sleeping, when I'm laying down, when I'm totally relaxed. So I usually have pen and paper next to the nightstand. So I wake up in the middle of the night, 1.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, because I can't get back to sleep. Uh, the, the, the idea just consumes me to the point where I, I'm thinking about uh, painting step by step through it. And the only way I can get back to sleep is to wake up, write down the idea, and then I can go back to sleep. Yeah, my, my problem solving ideas come right before I wake up. I'm still asleep. <laughs> like, okay, this is how it's going to happen. Right. While I'm stressing during the day, while I'm awake, and then when I, before I wake up, it might, for me at least. So I understand that. Yeah, I just wanted to say one other thing because I don't want to take up too much everyone's time. And I know we, we're just kind of running out of time. But one of the books that I read was Autobiographical Memory and Construction of the Narrative Self. And if people know my work, my work is usually a black male body, background, disconnected, and it's about the self. And it was something that I, and I just, it's just one sentence and I want to read it. Through examining autobiographical narratives, we gain access to individual constructions of their own identity. And it's something I, 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 I read that I can give life to my work. And that's another thing about reading, because uh, usually my ideas come from witnessing uh, like when Dave was talking about going out to, to, I go to a play or I go to a musical or I go to these different uh, events. And then I don't try to impose the idea. The idea just, so my ideas just come to me from all these different experiences. So now my experiences are through my reading. Thank you. Is the, is the fiction book uh, for adults or is it children? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you made it sound kind of racy. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, a, it, it's not written for um, adolescents, let's put it that way. How's that? Okay. okay. For a mature audience. For a mature audience. How's okay. that? That's good. I'll, 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 I'll live with that. Benny, I saw you like nodding your head and giving thumbs up to reading when George was listing his books. You want to interject some stuff you gotta unmute yeah <clears throat> well i have a day job i work with men that are coming out of jail and so monday through Friday morning i am i'm doing zoom with them trying to keep them safe and keep them uh hopeful and so uh uh, and so on the weekends and in, 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 in between classes i'm i'm painting but i'm also doing audio books now, so right now I'm doing Mac, Malcolm Gladwell talking to strangers, and I'm almost through with it because last Saturday I was uh, listening to that as I was painting. So uh, the writing, uh, and, and James Baldwin is one of my favorite writers. So uh, I got a number of his books. I'm halfway through a couple of them, you know. Uh, so, uh, so that's what the thumbs up was for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Has this um. Given um, your uh, client and then just the subject matter and then being home, how is this impacting all of that, juggling all of that? Or is it, you know, is it working smoothly for you? It's been difficult, but I've been getting back to basics. One thing I've done is we, get, we, we turn to playing with art. Instead of having a, a project goal idea, I started doing watercolors again, pastels. There's a pastel behind me right now that I've done uh, um, maybe a weekend ago, right? I just picked up the pastel, started sketching and, okay. and then, then drawing and started applying some color. So at, at the end of the day, uh, I created a portrait of him, right? Benny does a lot of portraiture. <laughs> <laughs> I brought it up. <laughs> this is one of Benny's pieces that's in the gallery. That's called The Poet. I've, I've painted that particular person, Chloe, who's a spoken word artist, about um, 10 or 12 times, right? She was modeling for me at, at one time. And so I have lots of paintings of her in my gallery. But one of the things I've been working on is this, this, this series of paintings called this Life, is, this Life Matters, which is portraits of my guys. And I'll, I'll try to 
use the screensaver to show you one of the paintings of him. And so that's Dave. Uh, that's a huge painting I did in, in, in my studio at, at, at Five Points. Uh, one second, the screen is, is black, or at least for me. Oh, here it is. Okay. There we go. Everybody got it? Yep. Yeah, so that's the oil on, on cabinets. And Dave is a, is a guy that was with me about six months, and he, he did a lot of uh, in, uh, work and healing. And so, uh, and so a lot of the guys, when they seem to be in that place of healing, they kind of, it's old kind of speak to me. So I asked him if I can do a portrait of him. And usually I share a portrait of him if I have a chance and uh, I'll give it to them. So that's Dave, one of my guys. Try to get out of this. I'm getting good at this Zoom thing. So <laughs> this is one of my tools I spend six or seven hours a day on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pr predominantly a, a, a portrait painter. I, one of the things I'm kind of do with the advice of uh, Evelyn is to start telling stories. And so now I'm trying to get the backdrop of the stories of the just just how they're showing up in front of me. I really get their stories. And uh, one of my goals is to create a series of work of this life is mad. These guys have been uh, off the way by the world. They're usually going through some crazy stuff and no one has really reached out and given them a hand. And that's what the organization I do uh, I work for is about. And that's one of the reasons I won't leave it for full-time art art is <laughs> because I think this work is really important in art. Let's jump to um Matope, who's on the island. Probably still with music in the background. About that flight with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I turn the uh, I turn the music off. Um, you know, the, the thing is that that I'm uh, I'm actually coping pretty pretty good. Um, you know, these days I'm not surprised by uh, anything that has uh, revealed itself with the present administration. So for me, uh, I'm not surprised by um, you know I guess in part uh, the foolishness and how callous. Um, you know, this administration um, is, and what it's caused me to do is to just really uh, reflect inwardly. Um, I'm trying not really to, to let the um, this situation really dampen my um, enthusiasm for my work. My work is continuing. So I'm, I'm always creating work, so I'm, ne I'm never really not working. Uh, but I'm also, um, you know, during the week I teach, uh, you know, four classes a week, you know, so um, that's, that's got me going. So, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday, I find myself, uh, you know, we're really in the middle of an online lecture. So yes, I'm in the middle of doing a uh, Zoom as well to be able to reach my students. And uh, so I got two, uh, you know, two large classes um, that I teach, you know, again, you know, four times a week. And, you know, being able to read papers and grade papers and, Kind of keep my students motivated is has really become part of you know who I am also um, but at the same time in preparation in, in parallel to that I'm you know working on a uh, solo show that uh, was initially scheduled for September that got moved because of of uh, just circumstances and so now the show is supposed to open uh, October sometime in October and it'll run from October through November and so I've been kind of working on all the components of, of that show. So partly concepting, part of it is painting, part of it is, you know, all the prep that goes into, you know, doing a, a solo show. So I've actually, you know, found some frames, I bought some frames, frames that were given to me. These are, uh, a lot of them were uh, gilded frames uh, that were thrown away by, I, I found frames even just walking down the street and I feel like a, a bit of a junk man picking them up and so it seems like Sometimes one man's trash is another man's treasure. So I, I guess I happen to be the trash man just picking up <laughs> the stuff that becomes the things that I can use. So I've been recycling and painting and you, uh, painting those frames, really bringing them back to um, some original form. Those will become the, the, the basis for capture, well, complementing and capturing 
um, you know, the full extent of the work. Um, I'm even in the process of making my frames, because I also make my own frames too. So, um, and along with that, I'm writing, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the description. So I do these um, artist statements about the work. So I never really just paint. So I always have to, just as Benny mentioned, you know, write about the work that I'm, that I'm making. So in the process of actually uh, creating, it's all kind of holistic. It all kind of comes together, you know, on its own. So I'm, um, you know, pretty, pretty involved. Uh, I got my uh, family that kind of comes in and out. So my, my daughter, who is um, an art history major in uh, at DePaul, you know, drops in on us once in a while. And so she too is, you know, got art projects that she works on. I get a chance to help her. So I'm really, I feel like involved in her art life. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, you know, just kind of cope with, you know, family matters, you know, trying to stay up, trying to stay connected. Uh, so platforms like these become, you know, a nice outlet, you know, be able to talk to people that I've frequently uh, gotten used to seeing. And it's, uh, it's, it's hard on, you know, on your, um, your personality when you don't have that, those face-to-face -face contacts, which, which um, I think we're all used to. We have to adjust in a very different way. So, uh, but I'm, I'm not lacking for any self-expression at all. Um, you didn't, is your solo show in Wisconsin? I know you didn't say I'm where sorry, it was sorry. located and it might be secret. The, the uh, show is going to open uh, at the uh, Union Art Gallery at uh, UWM. Okay. So, having, I haven't got a title yet. That come, that'll probably come later. It's not even something that crossed my mind. Uh, I think when the time comes, the, you know, the workers speak to me. Uh, I've got some themes inside of what I think is the overall arching uh, idea. Um, so if some of you are familiar with any of my work, uh, my work is primarily focused on, uh, you know, the African-American culture and history. There are times I touch upon material culture, the things that, you know, uh, have been made by African-Americans, uh, how they live their lives, and uh, things to reflect on that allow us to remember what it was like, you know, uh, for the ancestors that came before us, and then also um, some, some current issues. So I, I find myself being uh, reflective of maybe uh, the Renaissance, you know, like the Harlem Renaissance or, you know, Bronzeville, you know, Milwaukee, Bronzeville, Chicago. So those things kind of, they have overlap for me. So that's kind of what I'm doing. George and Brad, both of you are professors too. Are you doing a lot? Brad, I don't know you are, but George, have you been doing a lot of online <laughs> teaching and like trying to keep students motivated and accountable <laughs> over the internet? I'm on sabbatical. Oh. Uh, <laughs> look at you. Yeah, because I can be selfish right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be more selfish, but selfish is good. <laughs> Fred, the floor uh, is can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, and you can't hear me. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, same, same thing Matopi was talking about. Just I've been working on uh, Hangout Meet on Google, the, the Google platform. And so it's, it's definitely a change. I mean, I use my laptop only when necessary, when needed, uh, as far as teaching is concerned, um, just to go over whatever the, the outline is for the, the class of the day or whatever. So spending six hours on the screen uh, is an eye burner at best. So um, that's been a little challenging just as far as uh, staying on top of tasks and things like that. But I've been able to learn a, a lot of new bells and whistles on Google, so that's been good. Um, the keeping students motivated and accountable, that's been its own thing. What I found is the students that were high performing uh, for the face-to-face -face interactment uh, are still high performing um, online. Uh, the students that were weak on the performance, now they just got a set of other excuses to be weaker on their performance. So um, what I had to make clear to them today, though, was or just over the past week, 
that the possibilities of the fall semester being online as well are are very high. And so whatever anxieties and depressions and setbacks they think they're going through right now, they need to address that and get over it and, and get to the task on hand. So not to be callous or, you know, uh, desensitive about it, but you know, just stressing to them that everybody's trying to make the pivot. But one thing as artists that we can do is adapt, you know. Um, I think uh, George was speaking to that rather eloquently about just adapting to not having access to his studio. So he's putting all that energy into something else. Um, you know, for, for me personally, um, between extensive time online, and then just kind of decompressing and unplugging after hours of doing it. Um, you know, right before the quarantine, uh, I was on spring break and um, had an opportunity to assemble some musicians um, and was really working on doing a stage performance music show um, that was halted due to the quarantine. So that was kind of unfortunate. But the beautiful thing about that was that it was individuals that I've known, a collective of individuals I've known for at least 30 years. And some of them uh, performed with before, but many of them hadn't performed with before, but had known, have known them for years. So it was kind of like a reunion show, but it was the first time to do the show together. So I guess I say that to say uh, a lot of my creative focus and energy has been more towards uh, music endeavor. I've been working on a recording project for a handful of years now and, and hopefully getting prepared to release something uh, by the summer. But, um, you know, that in, in terms of what's going on just society wise, uh, I think I can, I can visit hermitdom rather easily. So just being holed up in the house, tinkering around with working, whatever it is I need to work on has been fine. Um, a lot of my creative energy outside of work has been towards um, developing uh, some mural proposals, um, potential projects uh, in the summertime into the early fall, potentially. Um, just uh, putting together uh, some of those. Uh, I was also involved uh, with Amar and Munir and George Jones on a potential uh, public sculpture installation we were gonna collaborate on uh, during the, for the convention. Um, I don't know where that stands right now. We were told we had received some sort of funding of some sort, but um, don't know where that stands. But between that and then there's a show coming up in my ad uh, entitled, We Hold These Truths um, which is uh, an, a, another exhibition opportunity for faculty to, to put work together based on their reflections on uh, the State of the Union, so to speak. So working up some sketches for that uh, triggered some great ideas in response to not only the, uh, the racial tensions that have been heightened due to this administration, that were probably always there, but he fanned the flames and then also uh, the current situation with immigration and just the dehumanizing of people and children at the border. So a lot of the, I guess, more uh, politically charged uh, work is kind of leaning in those areas and dealing with um, uh, simplified ways of, of, of displaying complex and serious uh, situations. But um, outside of that, um, you know, more practical things going on. I did have an opportunity to um, secure a commission that many of us here on this chat are familiar with the individuals who uh, are funding that commission, um, but it's for the fellowship open coming up. And, um, you know, I, I won't elaborate on that too much in this talk, but I will say this, um, you know, it's, how's this, it's how's unfortunate. It going? How's What's it going? that? How is that going? It's, it's going, you know, um, my due date is in July and I'm, I'm starting now. <laughs> so, <laughs> cause I don't have any problems, but, but in terms of stretch, you know, just, uh, working the craft, what it is, it's been rewarding in that aspect. Um, 
but it's also really kind of a it's more of a it's more of a just kind of going through the motions to keep the skills on top and that that's really what it's about for me and and then also being able to you know make a few dollars but but more so for personal endeavor work there are some things that I, I want to explore um, that are just trajectories based on current circumstances in life and society. Um, the work I displayed uh, and exhibited over at Five Points last spring, um, there were quite a few sales from that show, which I was very appreciative of and appreciate your efforts, Fatima, for making uh, some of those happen. Um, there's also uh, the Marn uh, program of the corporate arts where uh, MARN as an entity is developing relationships with corporate entities to purchase works from MARN uh, roster artists. So uh, many of the works that were displayed at your gallery are, are being strongly considered uh, by a corporation that is, has not been disclosed, but um, Lone Pro there's a happened. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm very pleased about that and, and the response to that work. And um, just in terms of, you know, we all kind of make our own rules as artists and we're all inspired by different things. And we all internalize things and express them differently. Um, for me, uh, you know, I'm kind of all over the place. So, you know, I, I've got I've got my interests in in public art, uh, I've got my interest in in music, um, and then I've got my my interest in just arts advocacy. So the Community Arts and Funk Festival initiative that I sparked um, ten years ago, um, that I, I did some cultural arts events here in Milwaukee over the course of like three or four years. Um, I'm looking to I'm beginning to revitalize that brand into a virtual experience. And so I'm gonna be doing a launch for that site um, where basically um, just trying to adapt to the current situation and having it be a platform where musicians and artists can showcase their works within one uh, website scope. Um, and then also uh, between myself and my, uh, my app, uh, app and web designer, person who's also kind of a marketing guru um, will be able to, uh, you know, promote Milwaukee or regional uh, artists and talent uh, to areas outside the region. And I think that that's something uh, for myself, I, I need to discipline myself about doing more so is really uh, promoting my work far away from Hello, can you still hear me? Uh, we can hear you, we can't see you. Yeah, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you're getting a call, don't answer it. We might hear it. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to get back to the, oh, here I am. Okay, I'm back, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, um, but yeah, just uh, creating an online platform uh, where, original music and um and artists and artisans can promote their works through another platform that may have a wider reach than their individual social networking network or even their own personal email lists so you know i'm all over the place but i got enough to keep me busy while on lockdown <laughs> Hi, Rhonda. Um, so I want to open, take the time to open it up to the, the general audience if they have questions, comments for the artists, or if they want to initiate any kind of dialogue themselves. I guess the gist of it is everyone is busy, everyone is coping differently but getting through it um everyone seems very productive which is good and i think that's the best way to get through is just kind of working through it and let the chips fall where they may but um i think the pr productivity will help 
um, set you up or set everyone up for when this passes because it will pass. Um, so that's good to see. Does the, the general audience have any comments for the, art, the artists? Questions? Probe away. George, how is your son? <laughs> so Fatima's asking about my son because he's a, a public defender in Milwaukee. So I, um, he says he has to give a voice to the voiceless. So I'm very proud of him not to go the prosecuting uh, line. Uh, uh, he's a, he's a, a public defender. And our concern is that he still has to meet with his clients. And so, of course, with uh, everything going on with a uh, coronavirus, he's still, he's still soldiering away. So he still meets with his clients, trying to get people who look like us a, a justice that they deserve and get them out of jail. Because uh, we know what's going on with the jails with coronavirus. It's spreading like wildfire. So he's been quite busy. And, and we just pray that things are going to be all right for him. Thank you for asking. Does he deal with both male and female clients, or how does that work with public defenders? Yeah, they don't, dis they don't discriminate. They yeah. don't discriminate. No, they don't discriminate. They, they, they get uh, a caseload, and they work with whomever um, uh, they can. I will say sometimes, you know, black folks can be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. but that's, not, that's not a surprise <laughs> to any of us. That, uh, he's trying to do the best he can. And, you know, can I brag for a moment? Just yeah. A okay, just a second. So he's been at it since June. So he's probably upset some people because one of his, uh, his clients, <laughs> black male, decided that he wanted another public defender. And so the judge told him, he says, you know, I'll, I'll appoint you someone else. But in my opinion, he's the best public defender that, that Milwaukee has. And he's only been at it for June. So he's probably pissing, he's, ups he's upsetting some people because I don't think people have been doing it for years wanted to hear that. But. <laughs> so thank you for allowing me to brag a little bit. George, uh, I would say, you know, the, the justice system is a toxic place. Mm -hmm. So I encourage him to take care of himself. Whatever he keeps him feeling good about himself personally, he, he, he got to keep engaging that. Right? Thank you. I will let him know that. I said, hopefully he's not afraid of therapy. That's always my question. Oh, no. He's already been like, to therapy. <laughs> but I always ask Benny because of his, his demographic that he has. He can start internalizing stuff. And it's like, how do you create that wall? Right. Still care, but create that wall and not. Because it will manifest. Or it can manifest. Absolutely, yeah. He believes in, in keeping himself he healthy, so occasionally he does go to therapy okay. uh, just to talk out and make certain that he is where he should be and not bringing it home with him because, uh, you know, that can happen. Any other questions bragging on children? <laughs> I want to know where Batoka is at. <laughs> Where are you at? You're looking way too chill. The Bahamas, you know. That's going to be in your mind anyway. You know? the, 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 thing, the thing about it is you just create, you have to create your own environment, man. Uh, oh, oh, you doing something. You, what, are you doing something? Is that digital behind you? Yeah, it's all, it's all digital. Yeah, it's all digital. Um, oh. Man, I'm about sick of you. Okay, <laughs> you have to tell me how to do that trick. You know what I'm man, I thought you were. I thought you were teaching online. I thought that's what you do. I thought that's what you do. Yeah, but I don't have no Bahamas behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, some sometimes when my, when my students are online, you know, there are times when um, you know you have to keep some, uh, you know, that, that professional distance. And so one way of having a professional distance is not necessarily to invite them into my private space. Yeah, everybody can relate to the beach. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, so yeah. uh, what it comes down to. No, but you know, I'm uh it's 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 all good. You know, my uh, I kind of sympathize with you too, Brad, because you know, now that um you know we've taken our 
uh, classes online, you know, the university has really um, sent us in a, a different direction. So, our, you know, I just happen to be blessed enough to have already been utilizing some of my uh, class curriculum online anyway. So the only thing that I'm not doing is getting in the car, driving an hour to my destination and lecturing in the class. So, so part of me miss it and part of me don't. Um, I don't mm -hmm. necessarily miss the drive, I miss the interaction with my students. But, um, you know, I, I usually try to fold oh. in a, a bit of a, a sense of humor into the classroom so they don't feel this, the, the anxiety that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's been forced upon us. So, um, yeah, so the, you know, the Bahamas today, maybe you know, Aurora tomorrow or outer space <laughs> uh, next week. <laughs> so you, can always, you can always call on David to interject some humor. You got a lot of <laughs> I don't know what's I don't know what's wrong with David, but <laughs> hey I uh, okay, I'm nothing but nice to you. No, I, it hurts. I look to David, I look to David to keep us uh, keep us motivated. No, he's a funny guy. <laughs> And so, yes, he deserve, uh, you know, he certainly deserve uh, an applause. So let me give you applause, David. So here we go. There you go, man. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> I'd like to uh, um, give some praise to my my kids. I have a, my oldest daughter is a home health care nurse. And her daughter is a nurse in, um, delivery and uh, labor and delivery. And then I have another daughter that's at the police department and a, a grandson that works at the uh, rescue mission uh, school. So, I mean, I, I, I just want you to pray for those guys because uh, they're out there on the battlefield. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, when George told me his son was still out there and I was like, I don't have any words. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but hopefully they have the proper shield, mm -hmm. right. shield, physical mm -hmm. shield that'll keep them to deflect all this stuff. While yeah, they yeah. have you to know, go. You know, someone, someone posed a question in the chat that maybe it's important for everyone to address, and is do you have any of the sages have any advice to emerging artists? So someone posed that question to all of us, and yeah, you think we should I approach that? <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to go, and I need my glasses. Yeah, I can see that. So do you, I don't even know how to see messages on here. Well, yeah, just go on. Uh, you not be able to? Uh, go down to chat and click on chat. There's an icon okay. down there. Just click on chat and the chat window will pop up. But you have to uh, also, when you see participants, click on participants oh, yeah. and you'll get a menu on the side. Oh, well, yeah. Click on participants. You'll see the participants and then you can actually click chat and then all the chat notes will come up on the Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So this message is from Gannon, who's also a, one of the current exhibiting artists here. And he was um, featured in the first of these video chat sessions. Um, so he had posed two questions. Um, are you <laughs> Hey, Rhonda. <laughs> um, hey. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Are you exploring new subjects or studying new subject matter in your current works? And do you have any advice to the emerging artist? So two questions. What was the first one again? Are you exploring any new subject matter? If you're producing, are you exploring any new subject matter? Maybe what you're reading and writing will influence some new content. And then also, do you have any advice for emerging artists? Could, could I just answer that? Because it'll be quick. Number one, no, I'm not uh, exploring any new subject matter yet in my work. Uh, secondly, I think when I began as a working artist and I actually had my own business for seven years is to diversify. So I was a uh, fine artist. I was a graphic designer. I was an illustrator. It gave me an opportunity to really get in and understand the business of art, which a lot of artists fall short on is that you have to understand the business of art to survive. So that would be my advice to that young person. 
uh, I would I would chime in and, and agree. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've always hung my hat on is learning how to do more than one thing at a time. And uh, so, um, along with even teaching, uh, you know, at the at the university, um, well, it, in fact, two places because I uh, am a fellow at the UWM in the uh, entrepreneurship program. So, so you're absolutely right. You know, being able to uh, diversify your skills, apply those skills, and use them to the best of your ability. One of the things that's been that we've sort of been cut off is having that face-to-face -face contact. But there's other ways to reach people. Um, I'm still mentoring. I've always mentored. You know, from the very beginning, that doesn't change. I mentor from you know uh, young emerging artists to artists that are not so young. Um, you know, being able to share skill sets and, uh, and expertise and, you know, just different things that work is, is really um, one way of continuing to stay connected. So, uh, George, Topi, Brad, Amar, you guys have been at this for a long time. Uh, so how do you get more... Hey, Benny, can you, can you speak up? How, how do you get more information on the business of art, right? You know. How do you get it? How do you yeah. get more information on the business of art? Because the art, the art industry in itself is nuanced. Mm, but then right. you still need to implement basic business principles too. Oh, I, I, I um, I read a lot of articles online mm -hmm. from from mm -hmm. artists and art galleries. I. I added it to my, my, my Google page, that's those subject matters. So a lot of articles come up on my um, Google page about art and uh, the business of art, you know, galleries, um, artists. Mm -hmm. So I, I get a lot of information like that. Okay. Um, I, I want to go back to Gannon's question also. I'm not um, exploring any new subject matter now, but I, I, I have an opportunity to paint to um to paint artwork for this this um this opera that's coming up next year, um, La Bohine, and it, it takes place in um, Bronzeville in Milwaukee in the 1940s, and the uh, one of the the characters in the sh in the opera is an artist, and I have to produce the body of work for that artist um, that would be presented in the show. So I, I'm right now I'm studying like what with um, an art by an African American um, man in the in the forties, what would his art look like? You know, what what kind of um, art was produced during that time by African Americans and and um, the artist has a muse so my work has to be um, uh, representative of, of that muse and um, or you know around her and stuff so so right now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to study what that work would look like for that time period so it's like having or exploring new subject matter how much how much studying goes into your practice or you're like you're technically like mid-level professionals now. How much studying did you do earlier on, or how are you doing now to to keep going? Like, do you research a lot, or do you let it go, and then maybe research a little bit to influence it and and give it more depth while you are? Oh, can I chime in? Yeah. Oh, I I, I study a lot. Um, um, um. I think I'm a, I'm a polymath. Somebody told me I'm a polymath. And um, so, and I just know like a whole bunch of random shit. <laughs> but I, I'm always, um, I'm always studying. So I, I, I would continue to know new random shit. So, <laughs> so new things I learn, you know, I, I put it within my work, especially, you know, about African spirituality or whatever, but especially when, when doing murals, like if whenever um, it's a new um, job or client, I, I, I study, you know, 
about what the mural is going to be about. You know, if, if, if it's going to be about something that's for a community center or, or a church or a school, I have to, you know, delve into what that, that community is about, you know, what hopes or dreams or aspirations they have, what problems they want to deal with, what's the history, you know, behind the community or, you know, all those sorts of things. So it keeps, it keeps me like my work fresh or, me always growing as an artist and it um it it also you know gives you an advantage like like so you just don't put out any old shit to and present it to people right. stuff. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. i was gonna say is there a, when you're doing public work is there kind of a social responsibility behind it can you just because you're an artist you can do whatever you want and because oh, you're I can I chime in right quick? <laughs> I think she's asking. <laughs> so, you know, um, <laughs> you, you, we all know Munir, right? We all know Munir Buhadin. Yeah. He, he once told me that, um, like, we have a responsibility to, like, uh, when we when we do art for a community, that we're um, sort of writing or creating um, a prescription for for what the community needs to heal. So, so I always think about that before I um, before I approach any um, project. You know what what the community needs or wants, or and how can I um, contribute to that and um, make it better, or present their hopes, dreams, or aspirations, or what have you. And, and now I'll, I'll be quiet. Do you have to do that, though? I'm playing a devil's advocate. I have my own opinion about things. But do you have to do that? Can you just paint whatever you want because you're an artist and this is what you do and you want to set your brand in this area or or is it about sometimes abandoning what you want to do to fit their needs? Well, for, I, for somebody, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll kind of chime in a little bit. You know, sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, um, it's it's almost like I remember uh, sitting in on the on the when Tyson came here, and Brad, you remember that question you asked about, you know, uh, an artist's responsibility and you know wanting to teach people, and I think uh, Tyson said something like, you know, not really worrying about trying to teach anybody anything, um, but there's a there's a, uh, a way of going about sharing your work so that, you know, just by the work that you present, people can learn not only from you, but they can learn about what it is that you have to say. So I think Ooh. if you have something to say, um, you know, you can, you can do that. Now, I take my own responsibility in terms of what message I want to deliver, what stories I want to tell, um, and then the images that are projected in that work um, I do want it to resonate with the, with the viewing audience. I mean, it's important to be able to connect with people, um, you know, when you're expressing yourself. So sometimes when I create these metaphors or these, uh, this iconography, you know, I'm doing it for a reason, you know, and it's, it's something that Della and I talk about often. And so Della, uh, and I'll kind of quote her, she basically says, I finally reached a, a point at uh, in my age where I finally have something to say. And I think that you can do that, you know, whether you, you know, are an emerging artist or you can do that when you're an artist who's been around. So I think the idea of being responsible, you know, that's, that's totally up to the maker, you know. So if you want to be irresponsible, I've seen people, you know, be real irresponsible too. And so it's a matter of what you want to, what kind of residue or examples you want to, to lead or impressions that you're trying to make uh, that can be important. Some people, you know, if they're not important, you know, then that's gonna that's gonna also resonate as well. So I'm not do I'm not making art for art's sake, you know. So let me put it that way. So I'm not making it, you know, um, just for art's sake. I'm not doing. This. I'm not playing, you know. You know. So I want you to take me seriously, you know. Homie, homie, don't play that. <laughs> Yeah. Can, I, can, can I get on that real quick? Was well, the responsibility whether from a public domain to a private, like people who might show in 
make for themselves for a gallery or what have you, does that responsibility diminish? If, if you are required to be res have responsibility about your could I get a, Could I get on this real quick? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think it kind of reminds me of, of, of something that's, uh, that was, we're seeing a lot used as a joke kind of now, this, this meme using Edward Hopper paintings. I don't know, have you seen these? Yeah. Where mm -hmm. like it, it, shows, it shows these Edward Hopper paintings and, and people are joking like, well, I feel like one of them now, or they're, or they're showing uh, uh, his painting, the Nighthawks, uh, and, and with nobody in there, in, the, in that uh, little diner. Um, I find that to be funny because uh, uh, what people don't understand or, or realize or, or know is that, that those paintings and that painting in particular, if you look at it, it was done during, they were done during the, 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 uh, uh, the time of the atomic scare where uh, everybody was afraid of the idea that uh, the atomic bomb was going to go off at any moment. And you see that in his figures, like they're all just waiting for it. It is kind of the way it feels now. They're 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 making these kind of like they're 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 poking fun at at, at how they look, but but no, they're we are those character uh, uh, those figures. Um, they they fit right exactly in to what we're experiencing now, because he painted it at a time that it uh, that revealed its history at that time. I believe in the idea of still being able to do that now. Uh, I, I do that with my work or to a certain degree. I'm trying to, I try to, uh, uh, um, I try to have the viewer or, or whatever future viewer, I don't know, um, have an understanding of the time in the present that of the concerns of where we are at, I'm at socially, uh, or, you know, uh, or, you know, even some pieces economically or whatever it might be, you know. So I believe in the idea of, of, of work being like a history a lesson to some degree. Uh -huh. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So can, can I say something? Because I, unfortunately, I got to go. Um, okay. But, but I, I do believe in creating work that's meaningful. And my work is meaningful to me. And I have something specifically I'm saying, even though the viewer may not interpret it the right. same way I interpret it. But right. I wanted to give you something to think about, uh, Fatima, because it was getting back to Benny, and then unfortunately I've got to leave the meeting. Uh -huh. When he asked about emerging artists, um, I agree with the, the articles and the books, but there's also this conference, I don't know if anyone's heard of it, it's called the Self-Employment for the Arts. And Lyle, so, Illinois? Have oh, you? Okay, it's moved around from, it, was, it used to be in Lyle, Illinois? You're right. Yeah. And so, so Fatima, if there's enough people in the area who are interested in emerging artists, wanting to listen to artists who have been at this for a while, maybe there might be a need for a workshop at Five Points where you, you know, people, you charge people, of course, this is after the coronavirus, um, and, and you have people come into Five Points, pay a certain fee, and then hear how people have sustained a career in the arts. Just something to think about. Yeah. Oh, you know, also, um, I can just kind of add uh, co a couple things, too. Well, you know, the thing is that uh, the Lubar Center for the Arts at UWM, they just built this, you know, $20 million facility over there. Uh, you know, um, and I've been a fellow, you know, with them probably for the, the last, like, full year. And so um, I've had the opportunity to teach entrepreneurship. So the, there's all kinds of books out there that, you know, you can relate to, but there are these principles of how to do business uh, within the art space is, is one of the things that I think that a lot of us have touched upon, like even from the standpoint of just, you know, the research that you do, the videos that you, uh, that you see, um, how do you create a, a strategy uh, for uh, working within a, 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 the fine arts realm? A lot of times what you see is, you see business startup and the principles behind small business startup, but you very seldom find, you know, business strategies for how to, if it applies to paintings or if it applies to ceramics or if it applies to metal smithing. So some of the principles behind, you know, when you go to business school do apply to visual art, but you have to change the language. 
And so the language of how we speak to one another, how do you speak to your customer, uh, we begin to kind of explore a slight different application. And so, you know, um, through our exchanges, I mean, I, I've probably talked to everybody that, that I know of that, you know, uh, that are makers that's on this, um, that's on this call in some form or fashion, you know, we share, you know, um, the idea of like, you know, why are we doing this? I, I, you know, I'm not doing this just for pleasure alone. And once you have an opportunity to sell, you've actually engaged, you know, in, you know, the, the principle of doing business. So if anyone has ever sold anything, you've engaged in some sort of business practice. Now, how far you take it, you know, is up to you. You know, uh, how entrepreneurs, you know, um, grow, they grow through this business exchange. Uh, the masters did, you know, you can't tell me that, that that's why I have this, this huge disdain for the starving artists. I don't starve well. I don't know about <laughs> yeah. starve well. The, the, the masters, they had patrons, they had people that put up their, you know, their services. Um, you know, so you look back at, you know, the Da Vinci's and, you know, the Michelangelo's and, you know, the, the artists that, you know, the church paid them. The, the Medici family was, was huge patrons of the art. That's who paid them. You know, you can't, don't tell me about, don't talk to me about starving. You know, I don't want to talk to the hand because I, I, I don't do it. <laughs> Yeah. I always tell students if somebody's a starving artist, either they're doping or they're so extremely <laughs> they can't get it together. If they so, starving, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> if they starving, they're doing it wrong. Yeah, unfortunately, I've got to go. It's been a pleasure uh, you, meeting with all of, all of you. And thank you, Fatima, for putting this together. You guys, right, so you, you, guys take, you guys take care. All right, enjoy, George. No, that's a battle, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, George. All right. I, I'm going to have to explain myself. I, I need to get some work done in the studio. Uh, so I feel like I've done something. Let me know if you need anything. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, David. All right. Bye, All right. David. Later, David. Yeah. All right. Um, I, one of my interns reached out to me today to finish up one of her classes. And one of her questions was, um, what personal qualities are important in this career? And I wear many hats like most other people on this um, call. I, I am a fine artist, even though I feel like I'm abandoning that right now, I'm trying to get back into that. I'm a gallery director with a, a bunch of different other hats. But what I told her is like, you need 15 um, You need to invest in developing your plan, your focus, or your story. Um, integrity, quality. Um, you have to have passion about it. Because you face a lot of no's and hurdles and obstacles where it's that insanity to make it, justify it, to keep going is going to require to be there. Um, I think you have to believe that it can to the greatest success to your culture at large in your own way. And I don't, I don't mean like it necessarily has to save lives. I know a lot of people like for art saves lives. That's not always the case. But um, you have to think about how it continues to, what kind of, community and society you want to keep on at value to. And then um again I said you need basic at least basic business and marketing acumen and then a little bit of bravery and anything. So hey uh I'll I'll say something to that because I gotta get off in a second too. Um I think uh obviously kind of to uh Matope's point definitely uh that that versatility is important as well as what george said but um you know i think relationship building yeah. and um i think that's crucial to success in whatever vein of career you're walking to uh or however many you engage with i think relationship building 
I often tell students that relationships, human resources, and potential opportunities working medium for themselves because you can literally create opportunity for yourself by assembling the right people, the right resources, um, and then doing the correct research about what it is you're trying to accomplish. So I, I think that helps move the ball down the field at times when uh, whether you have a website up or not, whether you have an agent or not, um, I think there's some pride and hard truths that have, you know, that all of us have used at some time, but I, I still think it, it boils down to just relationships and, um, and being resourceful about how you, how you manage those. I have that in there too. Any last words before we sign off? Thank you, Kate. Thank you. It's been Anna, great. Honda and all the other people. Some of them have dropped off by now. Thank you for calling in. Thank you to all the future artists for your time and your being vulnerable in the information. And I hope y'all keep doing well during this and after this. And I look forward to like being able to <laughs> see y'all again soon. Yeah. We miss you, Fatima. Likewise. <laughs> All right. Hey, good seeing y'all. I'll be right. on the phone. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Right, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I'll send this to you all. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.